So, we are ranking up Sapphire 2025 and I thought I'd give you my quick opinions on what's going on with WalkMe and SAP Enable now. First of all, the major surprise was just how much mention there was of WalkMe throughout the Sapphire conference. Um, Christian Klein mentioned it several times in his keynote address on the first day and it was mentioned by several other presenters as well. And on the second day, it was basically everywhere. Apparently a very, very key component of SAP's strategy going forward is WalkMe. Um, there was the mentions in the keynote, there was um, WalkMe has its own booth which you can see behind me there where they're giving demonstrations all day every 20 minutes. There were probably about a dozen sessions at the various places around the conference that was talking about WalkMe. Um, sessions like how XYZ company drove adoption with WalkMe, enhancing efficiency with the WalkMe solution, etc, etc. There was a lot of talk about WalkMe. So clearly it's very, very important to SAP. They paid a lot of money for it, they're going to get their money's worth. So, um, SAP are basically all in on WalkMe. That was very clear from the amount of mentions of it here. Um, but they they are very much talking about how WalkMe is essential to um, digital adoption, to their systems working effectively and efficiently, being implemented correctly. They're specifically talking about WalkMe's automation capabilities, which is very interesting, and about the integration with Joule, which is SAP's AI engine. So there's a couple of interesting takeaways from all of that, from the focus on WalkMe there. Um, first of all, WalkMe's own AI engine is effectively dead. Um, SAP are going hard on um, Joule, so that's going to be integrated into WalkMe. Depending on who you talk to, Joule is being delivered through WalkMe or WalkMe is being integrated with Joule, but whichever way you look at it, Walk Me and Jewel as a pairing are very much a focus of this year's Sapphire Conference. So, um, the other thing is that SAP want Walk Me on all of their applications S4, Success Factors, uh, SAC, um, Ariba, Concur, etc., etc., etc. They want it everywhere. Um, Christian Klein mentioned as much on his um, keynote speech. So the first driver from that, or the first takeaway from that, is that the pricing model is absolutely going to have to change. WalkMe's current pricing model, WalkMe the company, is you pay per application, you put it on times the number of users. And if you want to put it on 10 applications, that's going to be 10 lots of pricing that you're going to have to pay for. SAP's pricing model with SAP Enable now is you buy the product, you can put it on wherever you want, albeit limited to SAP's own systems. So that is going to have to change. When, I'm not sure, but I know that SAP are working on that at the moment. The other interesting thing is the integration into SAP's products. So whereas you can integrate SAP Companion into S4, success factors, etc., etc., sometimes it's a little bit difficult to do, especially on some of the Ariba modules. Um, but that is going to get easier. It has to get easier. Um, if you look at the latest release of success factors that came out a few months ago, or maybe a month ago, um, one of the interesting things from that is that they basically added a dedicated page to the admin console in success factors where you basically say, okay, I want to use WalkMe for my in-application help or my DAI solution. And it's just on one screen and it's integrated fairly seamlessly. And the way that actually works, if, you, if you're not familiar with it, WalkMe basically works for browser-based applications and you need to get it running with that application. And there's two key ways you can do that. The first is to use a browser plugin, which then has to be put into every user in your corporation's browser so that it can play all of the content okay. Um, which does take some doing, you have to get it whitelisted usually, installed on everyone's PC, make sure that the users do it. So that's one method. The other method is via script injection. And that is really designed for, if you've got access to the source code of the product, you can basically put a script snippet into the header of the application's pages, and then it will basically work WalkMe content with you, with, for that. 
So the script injection is kind of difficult if you don't have access to the source code of the product. However, um, the integration with success factors basically does that injection of the script snippet for you. So by virtue of you um, configuring it on this one page in success factors, it is going to work whenever any user displays success factors via the browser, and it is browser-based software, so you have to. So I 100% expect that SAP are going to extend that to all of their other products, all of them. Um, I've been told that we'll probably see it on S4, public cloud edition, um, around the middle of this year, so a few months from now, I think we're going to see it on S4. But I think we will see the same mechanism used to inject WalkMe into all of SAP's other products. And that's great. Um, if you've got any other products, non-SAP products, that you also want to integrate WalkMe with, then yes, you're still going to have to use the browser extension and work your way around that. Um, but for SAP products, it's going to be a lot easier to integrate. And in fact, easier than it was to integrate SAP Companion with S4, for example, which took three screens to go through and setting up a bunch of stuff and then cutting down the number of parameters because there wasn't enough room in the parameters tab. So um, I think that's a good thing that it's going to make that much easier to do um, without really any configuration on that side of things. So that's good. I'm very much looking forward to that. Now, out of all of the sessions I attended, the one that was of most interest, unsurprisingly, was the one that was led by Dan Adika, who is the CEO and founder of WalkMe, and apparently part-time DJ. So his session was actually called Creating a People First Transformation with a Digital Adoption Platform. And um, most of that was just, yes, this is what WalkMe does. But then he went into coming soon um, and started talking about the new digital, um, digital learning platform that SAP is building to replace the simulations and courseware components of SAP Enable Now. Because WalkMe doesn't do those things at the moment, it does purely in application help. So if you want simulations, you want book pages, presentations, e-learnings, whatever else, you still need to use SAP Enable Now. But SAP have promised us a brand new product built on a brand new technology, so not just JavaScript and HTML. They promised us that as a replacement for the remainder of SAP Enable Now. What it's going to be called, we're still not sure. WalkMe still think it's going to be called WalkMe Digital Learning, but we'll see. Anyway, Dan Adika did talk about that. And there's a couple of interesting things that he mentioned, which I think are very worth paying attention to. The first of those is that he mentioned in his presentation that there would be seamless integration with success factors. And I've also heard that exact same phrase in a couple of other sessions. So I went and got hold of him at the end of his session and talked to him about exactly what he meant by that. And there's basically two parts to it. Um, what I've been pushing for SAP to do with SAP Enable Now and success factors is have that seamless integration. So if you build content in Enable Now, um, and you, you create a course in success factors, or even if you load it in as a SCORM package or whatever else. If a user consumes it via success factors, they get credit for completing that course. However, if they consume it via the manager, effectively, um, a link in something else, or however else they consume it from Enable Now directly, they don't get credit in success factors, which to me seems unfair. Because if you're not getting credit for completing a course just because you didn't complete it the right way or from the right platform, I think that's wrong. I think you know if we want to encourage learning in the flow of work at the point of need, you absolutely need to allow people to consume course content, especially if we're getting into bite-sized course content. We need them to be able to consume that via the application, but still get credit against their learning path and their, you know, their learning history and whatever else for completing that course, no matter how they did it. And Dan Adika has confirmed that yes, it will absolutely do that with the new product. It is going to integrate into success factors. Now, there's a couple of questions I've still got on that that I didn't get an answer to. One is, um, if they consume it, I think the, I think the two points are, um, if they consume it in success factors, does it record the results in success factors? And if they consume it somewhere else, 
it records a result somewhere else but then sends it to success factors to say okay this person's now completed this course or does success factors proactively reach out to walk me and say hey these courses are assigned to this person have they completed them yet so whether it's a push or a pull of that completion data I don't know but ultimately completion will be stored in success factors regardless of where that content is consumed or how it's consumed so that's very important it's great if you've got success factors if you don't okay um, the other point on all of that is I don't know where this content will be stored. I don't know if it's still going to be stored on WalkMe's AWS cloud servers or it's going to be stored effectively in success factors in the iContent area. I don't know what's going to happen with that yet. My guess is it would probably still be in the cloud. Um, but again, it depends on how tight they want the integration with success factors. So that was the first thing I learned from Dan that was very, very interesting. And I'm absolutely delighted if that's going to happen and work that way. The other thing that he said is that you would be able to create learning content directly from within success factors. Because SAP has got to build this tool that lets you create learning content and then you've got to integrate that learning content into success factors. So if you can create it directly in success factors, then that saves one step of the process. So SAP have talked about this being a standalone product, so it can't be completely, you, you only get it if you get success factors because there's a lot of customers that don't have success factors. They're on other LMSs. But it seems that a version of this digital adoption platform, sorry, this um, digital learning platform will be integrated into and accessible from success factors and you will create your content there. And again, I still think it will be a separate product standalone as well. Um, so this, uh, SAP have said that they're building a brand new product for this. Um, using a new technology so they can do what the things that they wanted to do with SAP Enable now but couldn't because they were stymied by the, the technological capabilities of um, Enable now at the time. So SAP have said they're building a brand new product for this but talking to Dan I got the distinct impression that he expected it to be this exactly the same tool that WalkMe currently use to build any of their training that you'll see in the Digital Adoption Institute if you've been through any of that training, so their own internal training on WalkMe, uh, which also happens to look very similar to what you see in SAP Learning now. You go to learning.sap.com and carry out any of those courses. And that's what's become a very popular format of the moment of like an infinite page with widgets of information put in there, a widget with text in it or a video in it or flashcards or whatever else in there and have those as widgets and the page just goes for as long as you need it to. So only you're just scrolling down through it as opposed to flipping through pages like you do in PowerPoint or something like that. So even if it does turn out to be the same, basically a variation on WalkMe's existing tool or SAP Learning's existing tool, I don't really hate that. You know, it's not a bad format and it's relatively clean and it's fairly easy to build content because you're really doing it widgets, you know, slotting these blocks in. And if you recall back a year or two ago, SAP announced that they or the SAP Enable Now team announced that they'd put some work into allowing you to have the, like this infinite scrolling pages in SAP Enable Now, in book pages, which you kind of could, but it re didn't really work that way. All you were doing was setting the length of the of the book page to a different value and then kind of slotting these blocks of information in it which only worked if you didn't have zoom to fix it so it wasn't a great solution but you could see where they were going with that so again i don't hate this as a way of uh, providing or building learning content um, and with it being kind of widget based, which if you kind of like dig into the code behind um, WalkMe's existing training, it's absolutely widget based. Um, what that means is that it wouldn't be too hard for the SAP Enable Now slash WalkMe team to build a widget that can house a book page or maybe a whole book that you still flip through the way you do at the moment or have a simulation in there. Because um, those things, a lot of customers have got a lot of that content built already and we don't want to just throw it away and have to build everything new from scratch. And SAP have promised us that content currently built in SAP Enable Now will be renderable in the new product. And using this widget format would allow you to absolutely do that. 
So I think that that's a, another very, very interesting development that I've learned from him. The, the third one I'll mention is that Dan mentioned, or a few people have mentioned on their presentations, that you will have AI-powered AI authoring of learning content. Um, this I don't like. I really don't like the idea of machines generating all of the stuff that those of us uh, um, information designers um, slave over and try and build decent training content to have a machine build all of that for us. Um, and I don't actually think we're there yet. I think we're probably a couple of years away from that being effective. I think what it might be able to do is generate a rough draft by pulling information from various places, maybe throwing some screenshots in there around some generic descriptions from design documents or something to give you a bare bones that you can then pass to a training developer to finesse and make classroom ready for you. So that's a possibility. Again, as I said at the outset of this video, SAP are really pushing the WalkMe slash AI um, pairing for a lot of their stuff. The AI side, as far as generating training content goes, I don't think we're there yet. I wouldn't worry about it too much. For finessing bits of stuff, possibly, possibly. Uh, maybe, you know, checking grammar and stuff like that. Um, but it's not going to be able to do everything that a decent training developer um, can do at the moment. So, but it will be coming at some stage. So that's mostly the updates from Sapphire. Um, and it, again, it's mostly on the new um, digital learning platform that SAP are building. And, the, and that and the integration of WalkMe with SAP's existing systems. That's the big news. Um, I'll provide more news on other topics as I have it. Um, one final point, I have had a reasonable amount of clients reaching out to me saying, well, WalkMe's coming in, should we just move over to it now? What do we do with our simulations? What do we do with our other stuff? Um, do we cancel our SAP Enable Now licenses and get WalkMe licenses instead? Um, my advice would be no, not at the moment. Stick with what you've got at the moment. If you're currently using SAP Companion on um, S4 or something, carry on using that. There's no compelling reason to move to WalkMe immediately. Um, if you've got um, non-SAP applications that you want to also provide help for, yeah, you'll probably want to consider WalkMe and then put the same thing, WalkMe, on all of your platforms, SAP and non-SAP. But we don't have this new digital learning platform yet, and we're not going to get it until first quarter 2026 at earliest. So, and then even then, it's probably not going to have feature parity with SAP Enable Now and its capabilities at the moment. So my advice there was if you're looking to for something to replace your simulations and your courseware, Walkney's not going to do that at the moment and we don't have the new product to do it. So sit tight, wait until the end of this year where we might have a clearer picture on its capabilities and what features it comes with, or probably early next year and then think about jumping to the new platform. Um, if you're new to all of this and you want to put in application help on your SAP systems or non-SAP systems, if you go to SAP today and want to buy SAP Enable Now to get the SAP Companion component, they'll say, no, you can't, you need to buy WalkMe. So brand new customers, sure, go for it. But existing customers, I wouldn't be in any great hurry to migrate off SAP Enable Now for the learning content in the immediate future. Just sit tight and wait and see what the new product does for us. Okay, that's all I have. Hope you found that interesting. More information to come.